Good morning, and welcome to Mount Lebanon Evangelical Presbyterian Church. We're happy that you decided to join us today in worship. One announcement before we go ahead and get started, and that is regarding the James study. The James study, while it is already a few weeks into it, we still have space in the small groups. The small groups are meeting weekly, and they meet at different days and different times. So it is not too late for you to get involved, and we would love to have you be a part of it. If you would like more information, the church's website does that have that information for you. And also, you can call 412-531-3387, or you can email at info mlepc.org. Now, would you please bow your heads and pray with me as we come before the Lord in prayer? Father God, as we humbly come before you today, we remember waiting in the darkness before you came to set us free. And Lord, we acknowledge that we do not always get it right, that we do not deserve the infinite grace, mercy, and love that you shower upon us. And that there is nothing that we can do to repay that or earn that. So Lord, we lift our hands high as we honor you, as we praise you, and give thanks to you because you chose us first. What love that is, the greatest love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We give you all the glory and all the praise. And it is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Now, let us turn our hearts to worship. Thank you again for joining us for worship today. Today is actually our, our, our intern Jennifer's last official Sunday with us. She has been with us all semester, and it is hard to say goodbye. What a weird semester <laughs> it's been, too. Um, but she will be continuing to worship with us for a while. She uh, has decided that this, she wants this to be her church home until she finds her next calling. Uh, but we are so grateful for Jennifer, for all the work that you've put in, and all the many, many prayers, all the thousands of questions you've asked answered from from the kids uh, the way that that you've learned from us and the way that we've learned from you and we've been really really grateful to have you as part of our team this year so let me pray for you and pray for our service as we get started holy god we do thank you and we praise you that you are the god who sees you are the god who is with us through all of our ups and downs you are the God who knows how to prepare us. You, you have prepared each one of us from the very beginning. You talk about the way that you prepared Jeremiah to be a prophet, even from his mother's womb. Lord, we thank you for all that has gone into Jennifer's preparation for ministry, and we pray that you would continue to be preparing her for the plans that you have for her. Lord, we do thank you for the ways that she has ministered here and, and touched so many people's lives. We thank you that we have learned from her and from her passion, her love for your people. Um, Lord, we pray that you would continue to pour out your Holy Spirit on her, speak in her and through her. Remind her on the hard days that she doesn't need to be the Savior because the world already has one. Let her whole world be focused on you, Jesus Christ. May she make much of you and introduce you to people around the world. Lord, we pray that you would continue to be with us as we, as we turn to your word and scripture today. We pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that we, as James says, may be hearers and doers of your word. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you again, Jennifer, and I can't give you a big hug, but air hug, and may God be with you always. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King.
to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died praise the Father praise the Son praise the Spirit three in one God of glory majesty praise forever to the King morning that you rose all of heaven held its breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born and the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old shall not heal and shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me John writes in his first letter, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Let us pray together. Dear God, we are grateful that you are a God of mercy and you are always ready to hear us as we come to you in prayer. Lord, we confess that we do not always control our tongue this small part of our body that has such power to control us. We speak harshly, not realizing how very hurtful our words can be. In this time of sheltering, help us to speak blessings, words of kindness and encouragement to those within and outside of our homes. We confess that we live in a world where all too often we listen to earthly wisdom, which is characterized by jealousy selfish ambition, boasting, deceit, and lying, leading to confusion. Lord, we pray for godly wisdom to prevail, wisdom that is pure, peaceful, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. May we be guided by your Holy Spirit in all that we say and do. Hear us as we continue to pray in silence. Amen. And as John continues his letter, he writes, If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. 
the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. sacrifice not going with my life I sing in vain tonight so may the words I say and the things I do make my life song sing bring a smile to you As Jennifer mentioned, we are continuing in our study of the book of James today. We're looking at James chapter 3. 
James is, is making us do an overhaul of our whole lives, and today he's going to tackle the issue of our tongues getting away from us, of, of our speech, and how we can honor the Lord with what we say. So I'm going to start with a passage Jesus teaching in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus says, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick, up, pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. And now turning over to James 3, starting with verse 1. Not many of you should be teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder whenever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is this, a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can, t can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let, it sh let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes down from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So how many dumb things have you said in your life? I really hate to even consider how many I have said. I've told you quite a few of them. As I was writing the sermon, I remember the one that my dad told that was a doozy. He walked up to a woman and said, so when's your baby due? And she looked at him and said, three months ago. <laughs> you can just imagine him wanting a hole to open up right there and, and crawl into it. How many times have we said words that, that slip out of our mouths and we immediately want to retract? The tongue is not an easy thing to control. We, we tend to speak first and ask questions later. The words just come flying out, and then we, we have to endure the impact of them for so long. James is trying to call us on this. As he has been looking at all of the different ways that we need to get our lives in order to be lined up with God, he is asking us to take a big step to look at what it takes to even control our language, our speech. The, as, as Jesus said, from the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Does your mouth speak with what your heart is full of? Is your heart full of joy, of peace, of love, and grace? Or is your heart full of other things? James is amazingly good at shining a, a microscope into our hearts and seeing what it is that, that makes us not walk in integrity with the Lord. 
He, he has called us so far. We, we've seen him call us on being hearers of the word only and not doers, uh, of having favorites, of, of not demonstrating our faith by living it out through good works. We, we tend to have one problem after another. We say that we believe these things, and then we don't have evidence of it. And now, as we study this passage in James 3, he's calling us on our speech. Does our speech reflect what we believe about Jesus Christ, about God, about grace and forgiveness? Unfortunately, so often it reflects what is broken in our hearts whether, rather than what is true. But if we look to Jesus, if we look to the heart of God, he can teach us new language. So let's look at what James says here about this. You know, he first turns to teachers. He says, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. I told you last week, one of the things I'm struggling with in preaching through the James study is that every time I want to go, would you people stop that? God goes, would you people stop that? <laughs> I have to remember that, that, that I'm going to be judged more, more strictly, and there are so many things that I have to work on. I have to spend a lot of time just confessing before the Lord as I write sermons like this, realizing how many times I have fallen short of what he's calling us to do. Hey, I, I'm grateful for the line in, in the first line in, in verse 2. It says, James says, we all stumble in many ways. Don't we, though? Even James himself stumbled. Even every one of us, you know how many times the disciples stumbled. Pastors stumble all the time. <laughs> Our family members would love to tell you about that. My brothers have a list, which you shouldn't ever ask them about. <laughs> but you know that, that God is with us even in the midst of our stumbling. And he is willing to continue to bring us back onto the path, back onto the straight and narrow, back into righteousness with him through his grace. We are not, as we said a couple of weeks ago, we're not trying to earn our way to God. We're trying to reflect him better so that his heart will shine whatever we say or whatever we do. And speech is such an important part of that because what we say can, can change an outcome of a situation. You can probably all still remember something somebody said to you in school or, or one of your friends that hurt. And those, the, those wounds from that, the, those words years ago can hang in your head for a very long time. It takes a long time for us to even acknowledge the power of those words, how sometimes they can even become like a tape in your head, that those are the words that you hear. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You always mess up. Words like that can stay with you forever. But words that are, are encouraging, words that are upbuilding and uplifting, those words can stay with us forever as well. I've told you that story about somebody who said to me when I was 12, you're a lot of fun. I had never heard anybody say that to me ever. I never ever thought about that. But obviously here I am 40 years later still remembering the gift of that person's comment to me. It was probably something he will never remember saying, but it's something I always will remember saying. Scripture reminds us throughout the witness of Scripture that, that words have power, when you think about um, Psalm 139, one of my favorite psalms, it says, before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, Lord. God knows what that word is going to taste like after it passes our tongue. You know, sometimes you, you just let a word fly, and then you realize, like, oh, man, I should have, shouldn't have said that. That wasn't a surprise to God as much as you just surprised yourself and the people that you were talking to. God knows. And he wants to help you know how to say the right things and, and tone down the wrong things. Proverbs is full of different passages about speech and how it can be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, in Proverbs 10, it says, In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Our words can be silver. They can be of great value. They can be precious treasure to those who need encouragement or joy or just someone to say, hey, I hear you. I'm here for you. But words that are, uh, that are dismissive or critical or bitter that can drag us down so quickly. 
Proverbs 12, 25 says, Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Anxiety causes, de- causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Isn't that the truth? I feel like we're all living in a time of anxiety and depression. But if somebody breaks through that, that bubble that we have in our heads as we sit alone at home, somebody can break through and speak kindly. It's amazing how much lighter we can feel. Uh, somebody called me last night that, that I hadn't talked to in a while, and she said, hey, I just wanted to, let you, to, to know how you're doing. And that was just such a gift. Who are the people that you can call and speak a good word to to make their heart glad? This is a great time. Nobody's going anywhere. You can pick up the phone anytime and usually find people at home. Speak words that make people glad. Another one similar to that, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Couldn't we all use some health to the bones today? And and finally, Proverbs 18, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Are we eating dead things or are we eating life? Are we speaking dead things? Are we speaking life? It is so important to think about what kinds of words are coming out of our mouths, and we have to constantly be asking the Lord to be the filter. Often our filter is a very human filter. We think this is going to be fine, but we need the Lord's wisdom to help us figure out what that filter should be so it should let free and what it shouldn't. Speech is not only about what you say. Speech is how you impact other people. It's not just an internal thing or even with one other person. Speech has a lot of ramifications. That's what James is talking about when he talks about the small bit in the mouth of, of a horse or a ship with a rudder. And then especially a wildfire. One small spark, one tossed out cigarette can start a massive wildfire that that wipes out, you know, huge chunks of California. We saw the horrors of those wildfires of the last few years. Think about the one spark that started those fires. Words can be that have the same power. When we speak words of life, that, that brings healing to a community, to a group, to a, an individual who spreads that to the next person they interact with. But if our words are full of bitterness, have you ever noticed sometimes, and, and I am very guilty of this, sometimes I'll say, I just need to vent, and I'll start venting, and then my venting helps encourage the other person to start venting, and pretty soon the two of us are in a spiral of, of venting more and more, and bitterness grows up. Instead of speaking life into a situation, we're dragging each other down. That can even happen in a a larger group of people if one person starts talking about how everything's going wrong, and then pretty much soon all of the group is starting to spiral in the same direction, that they all start to think about how awful everything is. That can start a a, a whole wildfire of disease. It can kill a church. When one person starts griping about whatever it is and that griping starts to spread and other people say, oh yeah, I noticed that too, that's terrible, rather than speaking life into a church, they're speaking death into a church. Or or the same with a family. Are you speaking life to your spouse? Or are you speaking death to your spouse? Are you saying, I love you and I'm proud of you and I'm excited that this good thing happened to you? Or are you saying, oh, that didn't matter that much. I don't know why you're so excited. Which one is going to lift them up? And as you speak life into them, that's going to speak life into your whole family. And that spreads. So we need to be extremely careful because that has such a much larger impact than we think. That's not just the words we say that are, you know, here and gone in a moment. They linger in the air. And what do we want our words to be saying? Are they lingering with life? Are they lingering with bitterness? and anger, and, and fear, and anxiety. As we think about the, the, the reasons why God wants us to do this, hey, uh, James specifically says, you're speaking praise with one second, and cursing with another. And, and he says that, that shouldn't be, you shouldn't be doing that. Curses and praises should not come out of the same mouth. There's a really interesting way that he says that. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. You're praising God and cursing what is made in his likeness. 
That is so easy to do. But what James is saying is every single person is made in God's likeness. And we don't have the right to curse them and speak curses over them. Think about what Jesus said to pray, pray for our enemies, to love our enemies, to bless those who persecute you. We are, are supposed to speak blessing and life even into those that, that are on opposite political sides from us. The, the opposite sides of do you wear a mask, do you not wear a mask, do we open now, do we wait? It is so easy to turn on the TV and see people cursing one another, speaking death to, to their, their cause, their, the, anything that they support. How could you be such an idiot? All of those words have power, and they tend to eat us alive. If we, if we begin to pray for those who persecute us, pray for those who are on the opposite side of the political fence, what does that begin to do with our community? We, we, we say, in a sense, I, I, I don't agree with you ideologically, but you are created in God's image, and therefore you are precious. Your life has great value, and I want to treat you with respect, even if I feel like I need to disagree with you. You can respect people even when we disagree. And, but it all matters in how we speak, how we come at them. Um, it, it really sums it up well. At the end of this passage, the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, then peace-loving. Are you in your speech seeking peace? Are you seeking peace for whoever you're talking with? Is your speech con considerate? Is it submissive? That's a really interesting topic right now as we're trying to figure out, do we agree or disagree with whatever the government is saying? Are we willing to submit to the authorities? Think about the government that Paul was dealing with when he was saying that you need to respect the authorities and pray for them. When he's writing that in Romans, do you know who the emperor was? It was Nero, the one who fiddled while Rome burned. But he's saying pray for those in authority. So however you feel about president, governor, senators, whoever, we need to be praying for them because we need them to be wise and make good decisions so that our whole communities can thrive. We want the Lord to be able to minister in their lives. We won't, don't want them to fail at their jobs because that would impact everybody around us. We want them to succeed in a way that will benefit and bless our community. This is all extremely hard to do, though, and, and one of the hardest nuances is, is how do we speak the truth in love? Paul, uh, James is saying that, that we need to be considerate, submissive, full of mercy, but we also need to be pure. So our, our speech should be full of the truth of Jesus Christ while also being loving and kind. We, Jesus himself talks about the importance of speaking the truth in love and grace when he is confronted with the woman caught in adultery, and he says, you know, where are those who condemn you? And, and she says, they're gone. And Jesus says, nor do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He, he challenges her. He calls her on what she's done, but he doesn't mock her and abuse her like everybody else wanted to do. He wants to set her free from the sin that she's been entangled in. He speaks words of grace and truth together, and that's what our words need to look like. When we think about how difficult this is, I, again, at the beginning of this, it says, anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Who in the world is like that? There's only been one. There's only been Jesus Christ. He is the only one who has never been at fault in what he said. Think about the things that we, we hear in our heads that we say to ourselves or that we hear other people say and then we continue to, to repeat in our, ourselves, you're not strong enough, you're not good enough, you, uh, you're, you're not pretty enough or handsome enough or, or you don't matter, you have the wrong skin color, all of these things that, that the world wants to say. But that is not what God says over us. Lauren Daigle is one of my favorite worship leaders, singers, um, and, and she has a beautiful song called You Say. You say I am, when I am weak, you say I am strong. And it's taking all of the lies that we have in our heads or that we've heard from other people, and it replaces them with the words of God. Think about the things that Jesus Christ has said about you. You're my beloved. You're the bride of Christ. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 
He said, nor do I condemn you, go and sin no more. He said, I have come that you might have life and life abundantly. He said, do not fear, for I am with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. I am with you even unto the end of the age. He said, you are my beloved, my adopted sons and daughters. Those are the words that have the most power because they were spoken by the most perfect person to ever walk this earth. Those are the words that we need to listen to. Think about how a child learns speech. They don't learn it by reading a book. <laughs> they learn it by hearing it. They hear their parents talk. They, they hear those around them. They learn the accent of, of, of whoever is speaking around them. We need to be so close to Jesus Christ that we learn his words and his speech. One time when I was uh, with my family, my, one of my nieces was just little, maybe two years old, and she was sitting in my lap, and she reached up and she tucked the hair behind my ear. And it was just such a sweet little tiny gesture by this little bitty girl. And I had a feeling that she had learned that from her mom. I am sure that's what her mom would do to lovingly tuck her hair behind her ear. She, had, she was in what she did. She was a living demonstration of her mom's love. Think about how we can do that as well, that as we spend time with the Lord, as we listen to his words, to listen to his word, those words become the words that we learn to. That becomes our native language. Our native language is not glorifying to God, but God can replace that with his words, words of grace, words of compassion, words of consideration, full of mercy, full of good fruit. Let's, as we submit our mouths to the Lord, as we say, God, be good fruit that comes out of my mouth, not, not salt water out of a sweet source. As we listen to him, as we retrain our ears to hear his speech, may our lives May our words, may our speech to everyone around us be words of life, even as Jesus Christ, the Son of God, spoke words of eternal life to all he came near. May Jesus Christ be with you and in you and through you to bring life to yourself, to your family, to your community, and to this world. Amen. Let me pray for us now. Holy God, you know all of the words that we have ever said, and you know all of the ones that are coming up. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. Lord, we ask your forgiveness, your purifying power. Wash our mouths out with soap, if that's what it takes. Lord, cleanse us so that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. Lord, tune our hearts to your words. Hear, help us hear words of life, even when we're in the midst of a struggle, even when we're in the midst of a difficult conversation. Lord, help us to hear your words, not the words that are, are coming out of a place of anger or bitterness or hurt or self-defense. Lord, help us to see those that we are talking to as made in your image, as precious to you. Help us speak words of life to them, no matter how different we are, no matter what our background is. Let us see them with compassion and praise you because of them, even as we praise you for who you are and all that you've done for us. Lord, we do pray for healing in our land. Lord, there is a lot of anxiety and a lot of depression. Lord, we pray that you would speak good words that bring life that you would help us to speak good words that bring life to our community right now. Lord, take away our fears and replace our fears with words of assurance, words of comfort, words of encouragement. Lord, help us to, to tune our ears to your voice, which says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you even to the end of the age. We put our trust and our faith in you, and we will praise you even in the midst of this storm. Lord God, we pray for those who are, are lonely and aren't hearing hardly any words at all. We pray that you would whisper to them, whisper into their hearts, you're, you're my dearly beloved child. You're precious to me. You are, are more valuable than gold. Lord, we pray that you would speak words into broken families, 
that you would speak words of healing and words of life, words of reconciliation. We, speak, we pray that you would speak words into our, our political system, that we would learn to, we all love this country. We all want to see everyone thrive and flourish. We just have different ways of wanting it to happen. Lord, help us to meet at the place of compassion, at the place of blessing, and work from there, rather than first trying to tear each other down. Lord, help us to speak words of life wherever we go. And Lord, we, we don't even know how to pray without your help. <laughs> you, you intercede for us, your Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Lord, you hear the groans of our world, of my heart, of all of our hearts. And Lord, we speak the words that Jesus taught us as we had to learn how to pray. We speak those words as your children, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us, forgive us, forgive us for all of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please turn with me now as we recite our confession of faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease, His music is life and health and peace. He breaks the power of cancelled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avails. Thank you again for joining us for worship today. It is always good to know that even though the sanctuary is empty right now, that your, your homes are full and that we can be a body of Christ. The Spirit goes far beyond walls and we can all be one family together, worshiping the Lord together, even though we are still separated. We are praying a lot for you, and we would like to pray with you anytime you need prayer. Please feel free to, to call us at the church office um, or to email us, info at mlepc.org. And uh, you'll find lots of other in bits of information there. As Jennifer mentioned, we would love to have you join a small group. Lots of people have, have felt awfully lonely, but when we get ev everybody together on Zoom or whatever technology we're using, it's great to be able to see each other's faces, even if we can't be in the same room together. 
As you know, we can't pass an offering plate, but you are welcome to contribute to the church by just mailing a check, or you can go on the church website, click on the donate button, and you'll be taken to our our contribution app called Tidely. And brothers and sisters, please know that we are still one body. We are still one family, and we want to speak life to one another to build one another up. Is there, if there's anything that we can do to help you along this path, please let us know. We would love to talk to you and, and encourage you on this way. And please keep praying for all of us as we pray about how God wants to um, have us do church as we start moving into yellow and then hopefully toward green very soon. Hopefully we'll be able to be back together and worship in the same building together in the not too distant future. And now, brothers and sisters, the promise that I keep digging my toes into and holding on with both hands to him who is able. He is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine according to the Holy Spirit power that is already at work within you. To him be glory in you, the church, and through Jesus Christ for all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace.